So normally when I start a video, I say something like, welcome to Ben's Tech Lab. Today we're gonna build a Nintendo emulator with my son, Luke. Say hi, Luke. Hi. <laughs> do you wanna do the intro? Welcome to Ben's Tech Lab. Today we're gonna build a video game console. That's very good. You're natural. You could be a YouTuber, you know. <laughs> so I have a few supplies for our project. This is the main kit, and this is called a Retro Pie, and it has a whole bunch of parts in it to build our Nintendo emulator. And then the thing, the computer that's gonna actually run our software is this one, and that's called a Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna open that one up. And then later we're gonna need to put some software on a memory card. That's what stores what's in the computer that's running. And to copy games onto this console, we're gonna use a little USB flash drive to copy it from my computer to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, uh, okay. should I just put them down here? Yeah, you can throw it over there. <laughs> you can throw this too, we don't need that. <laughs> All right, there, now you can get it out. A cool thing about this case is this this cartridge can actually hold a hard drive. So you can, wow. put, a, you can put a hard drive in here wow. to store a ton of games if you want. We and don't need this, right? No, we don't need that. That was fun, wasn't it? Okay. So, there's a little instruction manual here. There, so the manual is just basically a bunch of pictures, gives you an idea of how to assemble this thing, but it's not like step-by-step -step written out. So, we need the computer right away. This is called a Raspberry Pi. It's a small, single board computer that can do a lot of different things, but one of the things it can do is play video games. So we're gonna open up that little box Check it. Yep. All Maybe right, so. Maybe to be starting to clean the basement instead of making a bigger mess. <laughs> we'll clean it after, right? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna open this case up. Oh, wow. It's got some parts inside for us to build with. And we got a, oh! We got a little, a little screwdriver in here. And then there's like some little teeny, teeny, tiny screws in this bag. And this is the heat sink. Heat sink. So here's your screwdriver. Thank you. We'll get out the little parts, careful not to lose them. So I'll put them carefully. That care is very important. I'll put them carefully right here so we don't lose them. But we're gonna start with the two stickers, the thermal paste stickers there. There are stickers? Yep. So you can peel, you'll see there's a little peel on them and we're gonna stick them on these two chips. Not too sticky. So stick one on the big silver one. And then we're gonna stick the other one right next to it on the memory chip. Good. Okay. Now you can peel off the top. Gotta be careful so I don't take off the whole entire sticker. Already they actually made. tell us to put the heat sink on in step four, but so we'll leave it off right now, but we'll just not try not to get that dirty. So hmm. their suggestion for step two is to put the Raspberry Pi in the case now, and you can see which way it goes because it tells you that these silver boxes face these little connectors right here. And we're gonna try to plug these in. Now look at this little picture, it says USB. The one coming from underneath goes in the USB three port. Yep. Let's try that. And this one coming from the top is gonna to go on the... Uh... USB one. Yep, USB one. And then the one at the bottom does not have any words. This one is a network plug. Ooh, and that's, that's a little tricky here. So you see here when I plug that in, I actually pulled off the network right off the PCB over here on this side. So we're gonna to try to connect that back together when we get it closer here. We'll just... Ooh, raspberry <clears throat> pie, almost in place. Oh yeah. Before I eat it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, mm. so now you can check our step two. How does that look? It looks, it looks quite good. You got the raspberry pie plugged in, the two USB connectors and the ethernet connector, and the two sticky thermal paste things are stuck on the CPU and the memory. Okay, so step three, what does it say? Look at that for a minute. Step three, there's another little wire here. 
And it gives you some tips about the colors of which one goes close to the corner of the Raspberry Pi. So you see here, this red wire has a little sticker on it. So you can line it up. See this, this red wire? You wanna stick it right on the end of here. Like right here? Right here, see these little pins? It's gonna click right on there. Yep. Push it down right until it clicks. There you go, perfect. There you go. There you go, so the red wire is now really close to the bottom right corner of the Raspberry Pi, so we've got it hooked up correctly. That's good. Now we're on step four where it said to do the heat sink. So you get the heat sink out of the bag. So there's a little heat sink. It's got a small fan in the middle and a uh, little wire on the bottom here to plug it in. Good. Okay, so now we've got to pay attention to how it says to uh, wire it up here. Actually, it's not even very clear from this instructions, but we can guess. So on the bottom of this heat sink, you can see that there's a little raised section right here. That's a little taller than the rest of the heat sink. And if you look at these two stickers, is one of them taller or shorter? Under here? Yeah. So which side do you think that this raised section should touch? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna line it up and then set it in there really carefully. The, this step four, on the extractions, it's different than what it is in real life. Mm. So now we're ready for some screws here. And it says to use screws B. And screws B are 15 millimeters long. So do you see which holes are gonna go in from the manual? One out here. Yep. Now, because this is plastic, you have to push down a little bit while you're turning it. They'll be a little hard to get in. You gotta push down a little bit and turn. Okay, let's get the second screw. I'll do the final tightening, but let's get the second screw on first. Get that guy in there. That, that'll that make sure that the heatsink is really evenly placed on the Raspberry Pi and not too tight on one corner and leaning up. I'll start it again. Gotta make sure everything works. Okay, you wanna tighten it? I'll tighten them up a little bit here. He's way better at this stuff than I am. Well, you're learning, right? Mm -hmm. Is this a good project to learn? Mm -hmm. All right, so we got those two, and then it says to hook up the fan. Do you see the picture of the wires? And where does the fan hook up? So there's a, there's a little connector right there on the board and the fan is just gonna attach right there, which is slightly different than it shows in the manual. Mm -hmm. So see that little white connector? You wanna line up that wire and try to plug it in there. It'll be a little tricky because it's really small. Why do we need a fan in here? Just to keep the little computer cool. So if oh. it, computers get generate oh. heat when they're working, right? Did you mean like a cool day or like a cool day? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're done step five. So let's flip Gotta this over. over. Six. Step six. So this is the top of the case. Uh -huh. and, and there's a, another USB cable here. USB two. Okay, so you can add this one. It goes here, the top. Yep, it's gonna connect right on there. There you go, nice and hooked up. Yep. So now we get to close it up and put in six screws. See these six holes? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. And then screw the other way. There you go. Okay, hey, that's looking pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. So for our optional stuff, we're not gonna do the SSD. So I think we're gonna save these screws and then I'm gonna store them on the bottom. They've got a little storage spot here where you could put SD cards if you want instead, but I'm gonna put these little screws under there in case we decide to put the uh, SSD in in the future. So I'll just 
squish that under there. Could be part two. Hey, pretty good. So we're we've got the the uh, retro pie case all assembled. We're ready to set it up. I won. <laughs> it's not even hooked up yet. Okay. So now I'm gonna go to my computer to get some software. Arkadaikai. Ready? Do I just type random buttons? <laughs> <laughs> type random buttons? <laughs> <laughs> but here's what we're gonna do. So Raspberry Pi, organ the, the organization that makes these little board computers, they have something called the Raspberry Pi Imager software. We're gonna run the Raspberry Pi Imager software and we are gonna click choose operating system. And we've got a bunch of choices here and we're gonna pick emulation and game OS. And then right here, it says RetroPie. We're gonna pick RetroPie. And then it gives you a choice of which Raspberry Pi you have. We have the newest one called Raspberry Pi 4. So we're gonna pick this option, Raspberry Pi 4. And then we have to pick which memory card we want to program. So the SD card that came with this kit is this 31 gig. It's a 32 gig formatted loses a little bit. Pick that one. Now we're gonna hit right and then it's gonna program this flash drive. It's gonna say, are you sure all the data on this drive will be erased? Yes, I am sure. Make sure that you're sure because you don't wanna delete a flash card that has maybe like digital camera photos on it or important family memories. How about you plug this controller into the port number one on the front? This one? Yep. There you go. Almost ready. It's finished flashing the SD card. So now we have to insert this SD card into our Nintendo. And there's a little slot right here on the side. No, you had it the right way. The gold contacts face in, yep. Just light, lightly put it in. And then just once it's lightly in place, then you can press it gently and you'll hear it click. I'm ready to play a video game. All right, so the first time you turn it on, it's got to resize the SD card and do a little bit of configuration stuff. And it doesn't yet know how your remote control is gonna work. There's a lot of kinds of controllers you can buy and we'll have to program what buttons are available on this remote. There we go, welcome. It says one gamepad detected. So let's hold a button on here to configure it. So let's come a little closer. So you have to hold any button to start configuring the gamepad. Start? Yep, press any button, just hold it down for a second. Okay, now let go. Now it says we're gonna go through all the buttons and tell it which button's which. So it says D-pad up, so press the up arrow. And then press the down arrow. Then the left arrow. And now this controller doesn't have any more buttons on it. Some of the fancier controllers will. So for the rest of them, we're gonna skip them by holding down a button. So we'll just hold down a button and it'll skip that one. Last one. There we go. And now you can, we'll uh, press okay. So it says we didn't choose a hotkey enable button and do we wanna use the default? So we'll just let it use its default that it chose. All right, just a quick legal note here. I'm gonna put links in the description below for everything you need to buy in order to build this RetroPie, but I can't link to the game files themselves. Downloading ROM files off the internet is something like downloading music off the internet. If you had gone and bought a physical audio CD, for example, you're entitled to make a copy of that CD in order to be enjoyed on other devices like your MP3 player. Likewise, if you bought and paid for the original Nintendo Entertainment System and a number of game cartridges, you are entitled to have backups of those game cartridges in order to be played on another device like this Retro Pi. However, there is a little legal gray area there and there's room for abuse. So that will be an exercise in discretion for you, the viewer, to decide what games you feel you're legally entitled to download and to go and source those for yourself. So to get our games into this box, we need to copy them from the computer to here. And to do that, we're gonna use this USB flash drive. So I'm gonna put this in the computer and I'm gonna make sure it's a blank new one, right? Plug it in here. All right, so this flash drive is totally empty. So that's good, we're not gonna delete any important files on there, right? But we're gonna create a folder called RetroPie. Oops, make sure you spell it right. 
That's just so that this thing knows the flash drive is for it to use, right? Then we're gonna remove it from this computer and we're gonna plug it in on the front port on this Raspberry Pi. So you plug it in right on here. Now we're just gonna leave it a minute, that's in. What's happening is the RetroPie software is copying all of its configuration and folders onto this little memory stick. Hmm. And it's gonna leave a bunch of folders for all the emulators it supports. So it'll say NES for Nintendo Entertainment System. It'll have the SNES. It'll have any of the other emulators that are on there and we'll know where to copy the ROM files. If you have a USB memory stick that has a blinking light on it, you can tell when it's finished this operation because the blinking light will stop blinking. But if your USB flash drive doesn't have a blinking light, then you'll just have to wait a couple of minutes to make sure that everything's done copying over. All right, I think that's good. Should we unplug it now? Pull it out. And we're gonna put it back in the computer to check that it initiated this flash drive well. So this folder we created before called RetroPie, it's now full of more folders. It says BIOS, configs, and ROMs. ROMs is the games where we're gonna copy all our games. And in, in the ROMs folder, there's all folders for different emulators. And the one we're gonna do today is NES for Nintendo Entertainment System. So I'm gonna open that folder and I'm gonna copy my ROMs here. Okay, so now I've copied four ROMs onto this uh, flash drive and I'm gonna take it out of the computer again. And now you can plug it back into the Nintendo emulator here. Good, it's nice and in there, good checking. Now we're gonna wait again. And what the RetroPie is doing right now is it's copying all the ROMs that we copied onto this flash drive into the memory in this Raspberry Pi. So we'll wait another minute or two Again, if your flash drive has a blinking light on it, you can tell when it's done copying files because the blinking light will stop blinking. But this one has no light, so we're just guessing. So we're just gonna give it a couple of minutes. All right, I think all the files are copied, so let's remove the flash drive. We're done with that now, and now you can use your controller. What do I do? And press the start button. Start. And there's a menu, and you wanna go down to quit. We have to restart so that it can recognize what ROM files have Start? been copied. Try B or A. There you go. And now go to restart emulation station and press the A button again. And it says, do you really want to restart? Yep. Okay. Yes. So now when it's restarting, it's going to see what games we added on there. And look, it says Nintendo Entertainment System, four games available. So now press the A button to, to open Nintendo Entertainment System. And let's go down to Super Mario Brothers 3. So you can go down a couple. Yeah, and pick that one. A? Yep. Okay, what do I do? So now you can press start. Start. And you can press start again to start a one player game. Start again. And this is Super Mario Brothers 3. So you're that little guy on the map and you can use the arrow keys to go to the number one. Mm-hmm. And then press the A button. And now you're gonna start a game. Now that's a bad guy coming towards you. Now the one of those buttons is gonna jump. And if you jump on his head, you squished him. Ha! <laughs> and now you can use the arrow keys to walk this way. Now if another bad guy comes along, you gotta jump on his head. <laughs> you look like you're bored to death. <laughs> All right. If you, <laughs> all right, if, hey, not too crazy. All right, if you like that video, then leave it a like down below. It helps me out quite a lot. And while you're down there, consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. <sighs> Would you like to bring a, a water downstairs? Do you have a water down there? Yeah, I do. I keep my, my little green water bottle. I just keep it hidden under the desk. I have over here. Oh, uh, one minute. Don't stop the video!